Hey guys, welcome to Meet the Family Mondays. And today we are going to interview Phil or Big Poppy. Hey guys. <laughs> okay, this I is love like when you call me Big Poppy. <laughs> this is like our third take on just that part. So hopefully we can get this down. <laughs> okay, three words that would describe you. So, thinker. I like to think about things deeply. Uh, witty. I think I'm funny, but I chose witty as a word because others may not think I'm funny, but I'm still undeniably witty. <laughs> and um, dedicated. I think I'm committed to hard work and to the things that I need to get done and do and the people I need to take care of. Okay. And so I actually asked our kids what were some words that they thought described their dad? So I will tell you what they are right here. Okay, Krista, give me a word that describes your dad. I would say smart, because like he helps me with my homework a lot and like with my papers and stuff. I'm like, when I ask him for a word, he's like, oh, this is what it means. Like, and he answers a lot of my questions because I like say, I ask a lot of questions, so. Yeah. Callie, what is one word that describes your dad? Love. Okay. He has a 10 children, so you can tell that he has a bunch of love in him. Um, he showed us each kindness. So that's kind of All right. Good, David, give me three words that describe dad. Uh, he's very smart. He's very annoying to play games with because oh. he wins all the time. And he brags about his winning habits. <laughs> I could go on if you want me to. But I'm gonna hold it in. Okay. Self-discipline. Hey Joe, can you give me one word that describes dad? Very, very punny. Very punny? Why do you say punny? Because he's all about those puns. <laughs> Are they funny puns? Yes. Who else is about the puns? Me. <laughs> Alright, thanks. Okay, so... I agree. They did not say you were witty. <laughs> what did they say I was? You'll have to watch the video and find out. <laughs> okay, so tell us a little bit about where you grew up. What's your background? Yeah, so my parents were missionaries in Italy. Uh, so when I was... Um, we went to the mission field when I was nine years old. Uh, before that, we'd been in different states here in the U.S. West Virginia was sort of our home, but then we moved to Italy and... Uh, I was there for about nine years, um, six years living in Vicenza and Florence, and then I went away to boarding school and my parents uh, moved to Trieste while I was in boarding school. And then I came back to the States to go to college. So yeah, so it was a fun, fun sort of background. Mom and dad lived there for 29 years. Uh, and so I got to go back and visit them a couple of times and mm -hmm. go back as a family even. So it was fun. Yeah, that was a good family memory when we got to take our four oldest kids um, at the time and go back for two weeks to see mm -hmm. your parents. So, yeah. Okay, um, a favorite experience or memory um, with our family? Yes, I'm not good at favorites. If you ask me about my favorite movie, I have a hard time picking one uh, because I think about it too much. Mm -hmm. So um, I will just say that you know, uh, of late, uh, my favorite memories are really our, our vacations when we go away as a family and we've had different types of vacations. We've done sightseeing vacations, we've done international vacations, we've done, um, you know, fishing vacations and didn't catch anything, which is the story of my life around fishing, but just going and seeing the kids have new experiences, that's really fun to be able to get, get to share those. Uh, with them and uh, just spending a lot of time together. So we play a lot of games usually when we do those and that's fun and we uh, Yeah, we just make make memories. And so yeah. that's probably my uh, one of my favorite time. The, the other thing that I really enjoy uh, On holidays, my wife invites everybody in the world over to our house uh, Which can be a little overwhelming both to me and the everybody else that's at the house um, but, Should we say everybody's invited? Like yeah. Thanksgiving is like November. Come on, come yeah, on yeah. Over. yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple months. Just We're not doing know. anything. Just show up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but a lot of times on those occasions, we will have a time of family worship at the end of the evening, and uh, those are just always special. Usually, there's you know tears shed just because it's a very you know emotional thing, and um, just being able to share that time with the family and worship the Lord and 
worship his faith, worship him for his faithfulness. Is uh, so those are some special memories. Yeah. Okay. And so um, we have adopted kids, and from China and Ethiopia. So how has adoption changed you? Yeah, I mean it's changed. Uh, it's changed everything uh, about everything. It really. It's been a very um, in in a good way. It's been a very disruptive. Uh, part of our life. Uh, it has um, at the same time been one of the hardest things that we've ever done and also been one of the most rewarding and, and, and at times one of the funnest things that we've done. Um, it, um, it has brought us to our knees and dependence in ways that we otherwise perhaps may not have experienced, uh, which has been a positive thing, um, also a hard thing. Um, and it has also just given us a very, uh, I mean, it, it's really given us a very strong sense of mission as a family, uh, a purpose. Um, it, uh, it sort of forces us to remember why we do what we do and, uh, and to be intentional and deliberate about the way that we go about doing life. So um, it's, um, it's, it's obviously been a very defining, very transformative and, and very disruptive uh, part of uh, of what our family is. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, It's also helped me stay married to you because yeah. it was a big, big part of something you wanted to do. So, right. I, I dream the dreams and he makes them happen. So that's how we work together. I freak out and then I try to make them happen. He always makes them happen pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. So what advice would you give, um, an adoptive family that's getting ready to go overseas or even just foster care too, but, um, you know, or in, in state, but what advice would you give them? Yeah. I mean, there's so many, so many things that, uh, you know, we've, we've learned through the process, but I think if there's one central thought that I would just say to anybody who's thinking about adopting or fostering or bringing a child into a home that may come from a hard place, or just, you may not have the luxury of bringing in that child as an infant, uh, into a safe and, you know, bringing them into the world in a safe and warm environment, or, or you're bringing them into a home out of some other circumstance, is just to make building trust mm -hmm. and connection your your highest priority. Um, and, you know, I think I think we have learned through mistakes and through you know just trying to figure it out on our own uh, that you know we're trying to manage the circumstances, manage behavior, whatever. Uh, it 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 can backfire on you if you don't establish that connection well. Mm -hmm. And so there's just nothing more important than making sure that the kids learn to trust you and that you have their best interests at heart, that you're uh, that they really trust your heart um, for their heart. And uh, if they believe that, then I think you can have a very uh, positive relationship going forward. And if, if, if that doesn't happen, then it can be a little rocky. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us today. Efficient. It's another word. Efficient. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks guys for watching. Have a good week. <laughs>